Welcome to the Picking Nerds. Rotation's right around the corner, BZ. So what are we thinking? We are discussing cards you should pick up for your commander decks from Guilds of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance. I'm your host, Joe Cherries. I'm your host, BZ, and that makes us the Nitpicking Nerds. If you haven't subscribed, and this video is about to save you money on the next commander deck you make, come back and subscribe, because we at least deserve that. And besides, you want to be subscribed to this channel, because our subscribers are 10% more likely to get Shocklands at the low, low price of nothing. Disclaimer guy here, the Nitpicking Nerds obviously aren't giving away free Shocklands, so they can't guarantee you'll get free Shocklands. I have no idea what that means. Uh, it means you get them for free. No, yep. Okay. Uh, mm -hmm. Moving moving to Guilds of Ravnica. We're just going to start off. We just got a bunch of cards. We're going to list them all here. Ones that we think are basically never going to be lower. And now that they're rotating on standard, this is the best place to grab them. Yeah. So either right now or within the month, uh, the next month upcoming with the rotation coming, these cards are at a low and they're going to drop lower probably due to rotation and seeing even less play. But then most of them are just going to go back up in a couple months after that. So you, there's like a window where you can get all these cards for the cheapest they'll ever be from now on. So we recommend you do that. Yes. Uh, excluding future reprints, which we could never predict. But we'll try. First one's Assassin's Trophy. It's not the cheapest. It's $11 right now. But it's a great card in EDH. It's a great card in CDH specifically too. And if you want an Assassin's Trophy, get it while it's $11. The card stands to go nowhere but up until it's a reprint. Yeah, it's really efficient removal spell, especially in other formats. So maybe if you're like a modern player and you're thinking about some black green stuff, maybe get an Assassin's Trophy. Uh, Knight of Autumn is next. It can blow up artifacts or enchantments on an ETB creature. That's huge. I could see this maybe going up to like two bucks because it is a rare, like Reclamation Sage. Obviously, that's like 20 cents always because it's an uncommon. But this one is weird for reprints. And like I said, it's a rare. So I could see it being two or three dollars. Get it while it's nothing. It's, it's about a dollar right now. Um. But I can see it being more. Like, the thing is, if this card continues to see reprints for the next couple of years, it'll just keep crawling up there. I can see this card easily being $10 in a few years. Yeah, it's like the the chromatic... It's not obviously chromatic lantern, but the chromatic lantern thing where it comes out, it's 2 bucks, nobody respects it, and then it's $10. And then it gets reprinted, and nobody kicks it up, and then it's $10 again. <laughs> or, or I can think of another example that is Ether Sworn Canonist, where it's like, it's a dollar forever, then, every, then a deck needs it. So now it's a million dollars, and... Then they reprint it, and now it's a dollar. And then it's a dud. <laughs> Mission Briefing. Blue, blue. Give one of your things flashback. Cast it. This this one is weird because you can pay alternate costs. It just lets you cast it. So it's not even flashback. It's like a different Snapcaster Mage. It also digs a couple of cards. If you have an empty graveyard, you could still technically cast this and have it do something. I like Mission Briefing a lot. It's really only a dollar, like a dollar fifteen. That's totally worth it. I could see this being four or five bucks. I want to be very clear. In EDH... Um, it's not as good as Snapcaster because Snapcaster has the bounces and the going back to your hand, stuff like that. But I think Mission Griefing is on a much more comparable level than in other formats like uh, Modern, where the 2-1 body is actually a super relevant thing. Uh, in comparison, the 2-1 body isn't what's important, but it is still there. I mean, Mission Briefing is close enough, especially if you want to be on a budget. Yeah, how about it's the budget Snapcaster Mage? And that alone, whenever there's, oh, it's the budget this, that card always goes up and then stops being budget. Yep. And then you need a, oh, it's the budget mission briefing, and then that card goes off. Yep, that's true. Uh, next, Shocklands. Uh, don't get these quite yet. Wait about the, wait until right at rotation when all the standard players are unloading their Shocklands and then get them because standard players have a ton of Shocklands right now, and if they don't play other formats, they're going to be moving them. Um, Shocklands are a staple of EDH, and they always will be because they're so good. They're just such good lands. Especially when you start at 40 life. It's a free roll to pay two life at least twice, always, every game. Shocklands are great. We're just going to say Shocklands for Guild of Ravnica and Ravnica Allegiance, all 10. Lump them together. Oh, this is my favorite card. This is the one that you actually, like, I'm going to put the most weight on this one. Under Realm Lich, this is our favorite card. Well, it's my favorite card recently. And not, okay, it's great. Four, three, four, five. If you would draw, you look at the top three. Two go into your graveyard, one goes in your hand. You pay four life, and it becomes indestructible, and I think you tap it. This was a dollar. And then we started hyping it up, and now it's like $5. And I guarantee you, in a year, this card's going to be like $15. Maybe. When you, like, when you play it, it has such a huge effect in the game. Well, obviously, I can't, I can't actually guarantee that. Get Disclaimer Guy up in here for that one. But there, there's no way this card won't 
Oh, wait, that's still that's still a definite statement. I think this card will be $15 in a year, and I'm smart. Only a Sith deals in absolutes. <laughs> yeah, if you can't see, those are Anakin and Obi-Wan action figures. I think people were asking what those were. Yeah, they're, ti- yeah. they're so tiny. Yeah, they are tiny. We want, we'll, get, we'll get bigger ones eventually. We did. We said if we reach, what was it, 100K subs that we will get the big fancy Obi-Wan. Oh, it was so much money. It was like $3,000. <laughs> Because it, it looked like you and McGregor. <laughs> it looks literally like him. Okay. Next is Thousand Year Storm. If you like silly storm decks and you like overkill beyond belief, this is such a fun card. I think that that's what makes this card so cool. It's okay in a decent card. But on top of that, it is so Timmy on top of being a decent card. So it's like, oh, at the Timmy levels, it's like $4. Get them, get them when, they, when they rotate on standard. This card is so cool. And I know people love it. Because you take your favorite spell, this lets you turn any spell into a storm spell. So you're like, oh, my favorite spell is opt. Well, now you can cast 30 ops in a turn if you really want to. So this this enables so many shenanigans, and it's going up. There's no chance that that stays low. Uh, it's too Timmy. It's too, it's too Timmy. Timmy. It's way too Timmy not to go up. Just like Under Unglitch, they're both mythic rares from this set. Guilds of Ravnica was not the best draft environment. So it probably was opened a little bit less than even Ravnica Legions. Mm-hmm. Uh, what's next? Well, next up is Expansion Explosion, standard uh, all-star. You can copy a spell or just deal a bunch of damage and draw a bunch of cards. This is actually a deceptively good mana sink. Explosion looks awful, but as soon as you cast it for more than four, you're feeling pretty good about yourself. So I would recommend, while this is like one or two dollars, buy like three. It's, I mean, it, I, I don't want to understate this, but Expansion on the side is super good for winning like Counter Wars. It's super good for like copying like a demonic tutor things like that this card is very good expansion don't underestimate how good expansion is like it is just the staple on part but it is probably the part you'll cast more often and explosion will be like okay well now i have 20 mana let's make a giant explosion well torment of hellfire is a great expel but it'd be a lot better if it said half of it was torment of hellfire or you could like draw a card of loser life like that would just be a way better card yeah it actually does something if it's not the giant expel yeah. Uh, speaking of mythic rares from the set, Doom Whisperer is pretty cheap right now. It's super bomby and mythic-y, and <laughs> it's cool. Um, it, you can sur- pay two to surveil. It's a 6-6 six, six flyer. Things big. Um, it also, I've seen it when BZ's played it. If you have excess life, which you started for so you'll have excess life, you can just pay and just make your draws really good. Yeah, or like I had a living death in my hand. I'm like, okay, I'll just pay 12 life, mill 12, and let's go. I think another thing this thing does is it is pay life colon, and there's not many cards that do that, or cards that do that that are good. So this is a reasonably costed. It's not eight mana; it's five mana. It lets you just pay all your life if you want to. I think that's really cool. And it comes with it, it comes with an above curve body on it's top a, of that. Yeah, six six flampler. It's not bad. What's not next? Bad. Oh, beast whisper. We called this one early on when it was fifty cents. It's whenever you cast a creature spell, draw a card. This is almost even just as much as like the mythics we just talked about. Pick this up. Please, if you're ever going to build a green creature deck, you're going to need a Beast Whisper. Uh, get the, this is a dollar right now. This will easily keep crawling up. I mean, I wonder, the, what is the card I'm trying to think of? What is the six mana version of this? Oh, Soul. Soul of the Harvest. Soul of the Harvest. So Soul of the Harvest has crawled up to like two, three dollars sometimes. This card is a million times better. And Soul of the Harvest has been reprinted like four times. Yeah, exactly. Get this card while it's cheap. Get it now because I don't see this card staying a dollar for much more than a month or two. No, yeah, it, People are going to realize, oh, I need my Beast Whispers, and then they're not going to be any Beast Whispers. And that last last for this set is Midnight Reaper. Three mana, three, two. Whenever it or another creature you control dies, non-token, you draw a card and lose a life. This is so good. It's so good. It counts itself. It's it, it uh, You lose a life, and it, it's like Grim Horror Specs, but it counts itself. It's just It just reminds me of another um, thing where life is such a high resource that losing that life isn't going to matter when you're drawing cards. Did you know we did a video about life being a resource? Uh, yeah. And I know potentially starting uh, Commander Games at 30 life? Check it out. It's pretty good. All right. And moving on to Ravnica Allegiance, there's a few more uh, cards that we want to talk about. Uh, first, Awaken the Earth's Wild. This card is like 30 cents. And I think this card is actually just incredibly good. Um, we, don't, we don't play it, but I think it's way better than maybe even... We, we shout it out all the time. But we never play it. I think we probably should. This card is, it's so good. I think this is a card that has a high disparity between fun, which is way down here, and uh, 
how good it is. The card is very, very good, but it's not very fun. No, I remember there was an old card from a Lower Reborn that, like, I think it was Identity Crisis, where it exiles someone's hand in graveyard. That card was really good. I remember we played it, and you always hated it. Well, yeah, because <laughs> like, I literally just had to take it out. But this is basically that. If your deck doesn't care or wants its hand in its graveyard or gets triggers of discarding, this is the same thing. Just ruin everybody's day, except yours. I'm actually putting this into a deck. I'm building Kroxa, and I'm finishing up the, hopefully finishing up the deck today, and it's in the deck. It took you so long to build that deck. Yes. It's, it's Go check our when our Kroxa video came out. That's when he was like, oh, I think I want to build Kroxa. Yep, that's true. Uh, next is Guardian Project, much like Beast Whisperer. Uh, it's basically just an enchantment Beast Whisperer in EDH because things don't share names in this format, it turns out. Yeah, this one I think is even better. It's, it lets you flicker. Uh, every creature does it. It's harder to kill because this is an enchantment. If you have enchantment matters stuff, you just play this too. I think they're close because I think Beast Whisperer also gets the bonus of it's always going to be in a creature deck, so it's easier to tutor up with like uh, things like Horde of Calling or Green Sun Zenith. And it's an elf. And it's an elf. So I think Beast Whisperer, I think Beast Whisperer is probably a little higher, but they're so close. There's it it was obviously a discussion for both of them. Uh, next is Judith the Scourge Diva. Uh, she is awesome. She is an awesome aristocrat card. And in, in, she's in black red. So it's like she doesn't see as much play as she possibly could. But if you're playing a black red aristocrat deck, which is like the colors for aristocrats, get her. She's so good. She kills creatures with her ping. Yeah, she can. Uh, this probably isn't going to go up too much. She probably got some time to pick up Judith. I think she was seeing play in historic. So maybe post quarantine, if you want to get some. Like before quarantine's over and people start playing Paper Historic. Can you even play Paper Historic? It's not intended to be played in Paper. Really? That yeah. makes sense. It's probably miserable oh, yeah. to keep track of everything. Oh, yeah. How would you ever So, I, I mean, I don't know where you're going to need Judas for. Uh, Judith is really... I mean, I think you just need... Judith is just such a good EDH card. I think she'll get to a... She's like, she'll keep going up slowly and slowly. And if she's just a card. Get her at 30 cents. She's really good. You know what? She saw Fringe play in Modern Humans. There you go. She's also She is seeing play in Standard currently. Well, yeah, but when she rotates out, she won't. Yeah, I know. That's just, what this is about. I'm just saying, like, she's she works well with uh, Winota. Okay, Prime Speaker Vanifar is next. This is a birthing pod creature. This got so much hype when it came out, and we made a video on it. It's really good. Yeah, if you're trying to make, like, a... It's its own, like, semi-competitive deck. Where you just go up the chain, you make infinite creatures, and blah, 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 blah. It's a good card. Pick it up when it rotates out. I don't think anyone... Pick it up now. No one's doing Vanifar things. Like, that's not cool anymore. It's, it's a really good, uh, this is a really good 99 card on top of being a really good commander. Because if you want Birthing Pod in your deck, you probably want Vanifar. Because, again, Vanifar is tutorable with your things like your Court of Callings and your Greens on Zenith. Wow. <laughs> a Verity Circle is a weird one. Two and a blue enchantment. Whenever an opponent's creature becomes tapped, if it's not attacking, you draw a card. And you can pay four and a blue to tap a creature without flying. This is so weird. This is more of a competitive card. But I could see it maybe going up. If everybody kind of tuck this away or trade it in for bulk. Maybe it goes up to like four bucks. And I don't even know. I I think it's better than it looks because it looks not great. But whenever they tap a mana dork for mana, you just draw a card. No, another thing about this card is it's better than how you read it because you said if it's not attacking, technically if they attack with a Vigilance creature, then tap it for mana, you, it is attacking. <laughs> right, if it's not being declared as an attacker, that I is, think is the wording. That is the wording. <laughs> okay. Verity Circle, though, maybe something... If I was, if I didn't have one, I think I would buy two, and then I just, you know what? You're safe. You spent fifty cents. You're covered if you ever want to put it in a deck. All right. Yeah. Next, Biomancer's Familiar. This is a, a creature version of Training Grounds for you, and it's just a creature version of Training Grounds. Talk about card that's going to go up. <laughs> Training Grounds is garbage. It is useless. It was useful nowhere at the time. It was like five dollar card. That was already expensive. Now it's like, what was it, like 40, 50 bucks? It's really expensive. It's ridiculous. And just wait a couple of years and all of these training grounds clones are going to be 10 bucks, something like that. I could see it anyway. It's just, a, again, we, there has, I will say it one more time. If these cards get reprinted into the ground, obviously they're not going to go up and obviously there might be a cheaper time to pick them up. But until then, this is going to be the cheapest time for a while. Yeah, for Biomancer's Familiar, it's worth nothing. And... They just came out, so it's not like they're going to reprint all these immediately. Yeah, exactly. And the last one is End Raise Forerunners, which is a great budget version of Crater of Behemoth. That's all it is. Um, if you need a Crater for your deck, but you're like, wow, I don't have $40 to spend on a Crater Hoof. Or I didn't I didn't win the deck building challenge, and then they're picking their Patreon. So I have to buy an End Raise <laughs> Forerunners. Like, that's fine. Just take everything we said about 
mission briefing and Snapcaster, and then port it over to NRA's Forerunners and Crater Hoof, basically, except for the stuff about the graveyard. And the last one, the last, last one that we're just going to throw out there, uh, Smothering Tithe is already really expensive, but it's probably going to get worse. So, I, like, if you think it's going to get reprinted, don't buy it. If you don't think it's going to get reprinted, then obviously it's not going to get any better. Bold prediction. I think that it probably gets reprinted next Commander set. Well, Commander Legends? Uh, yeah. Oh, that's maybe. My, that's my thought. Quite yeah. possibly. Is that? Uh, so that's the end of our video. Special shout-outs to all of our patrons. We love you all as much as we can without making you uncomfortable. You guys are awesome. If you'd like to join them, you can head down to the description and click on the little patron link, and I'll take you there. And this month, if you are a patron at the end of this month, which means you paid for this month, you are entered to win a Crater Hoof Behemoth. Wait a minute. That's cool. But what about a foil one? You're entered to win a foil Crater Hoof Behemoth. Not n Race Forerunners. Not an n Race Forerunners. You get foil Crater Hoof. It's from Modern Mass. It, it looks great. It's gorgeous. We have it. We've had it for a while. And you guys are going to love this card. Yeah, we don't need it anymore. So we're passing the savings on to you. What's that from? Passing the savings on to you? Is it Family Guy? Oh, I hope not. I really hope it's not. But it might be. There's a link in the description, and it's a TCG Player Affiliate link, which means if you go to the link, you're going to see all the cards we just shouted out as buy these before they go up. This is the perfect chance to tell you to actually buy them. If you buy them through the link, we get a kickback on the order, and it actually helps the channel while helping you save a bunch of money. So we basically just saved you money right now in this video. So you ordering the cards saves you money, and then it saves us money. And if you can't get enough of me and sometimes never be easy. Never sometimes. Never sometimes. Uh, I stream at 10 a.m. on weekdays and on Saturday nights I've been doing streams too. Whoa. So if you can't get enough of me uh, and you, if you like Fall Guys, if you like Magic, mostly Magic, but if you like Fall Guys also because I've really been enjoying that game, come on by and see what I'm doing. I scream a lot at Fall Guys. That game gets me really intense. I thought you were going to say I stream a lot. I'm like, scream a lot. I, no, yeah, I scream. Like Fall Guys gets me very emotional for some reason. and like It's because it's the... They've cracked the formula. It's like that. It's like the battle royale. Like there's a hundred people, and then they're slowly gonna go down to zero people. Yeah, I think it's more. I think I like I like the style of it more. Than it's a got a, like a, I feel it has like a one versus a hundred vibe, except you're all the hundred. You know where you just see the little. It's like the same formula, the little format where there's all the blocks and then they go red. Well, seems we're just accidentally doing a tidbit. Uh, also, they used to have, and this makes me sad that they had to get rid of this because this was one of the most fun things Xbox Live I think ever did. They had a one versus one hundred game. Um, yeah. And it was so fun, but they couldn't do it because people were cheating. Um, because Come on, people. Come on. The fact is, no matter how quick you made the timer, Google was Google and typing is faster than what your timer is. Yeah. What is, that, what is the old saying? Is 10 million results in 0.6 seconds? <laughs> Google will show you. There was a um, – the, my favorite one was – they. this is basically the question that showed everyone was cheating, um, essentially. Uh, they asked what the biggest – land mammal was and the first thing when you search that pops up is african elephant but that's not what it is uh-huh it's something else and like the first google thought just happens to be wrong yeah on that one thing and everybody picked the wrong answer like it's everybody like, would get wrong oh like it, like 12 people were left afterward gee it's like of course because everyone was cheating but we digress about one versus 100 for the xbox 360 that's what we were talking about right <laughs> that's what this video so go to the tcg player link Buy one versus a hundred for the Xbox 360. It was free to play. It was so fun. Okay, if you spend nothing, we'll buy it for zero dollars and we get a kickback, and then we're done. <laughs> Peace out, Tribe Scout.